Hi, this is Brennan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I'm here with Joel and Adam for another episode of, I guess now we're getting into territory where this isn't an actual titled segment of the podcast, so <laughs> we're just going to be covering revenge movies, specifically vigilante type movies, you know, probably do one or two, if, if, we, if, if they get really excited about it, we might do three, and today we're doing Ms. 45. Um, this is an Abel Ferrara film. It came out in 1981. Um, it's kind of more famous. I think it's one of these movies where it's more famous for some of the imagery that emerged out of it, like the nun with the gun and things like that. Like there are certain scenes that are very well known. I, I get the impression it's more of a cult type movie, but it's a basic uh, rape revenge film. That's a, it's sort of a, um, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, just just one of these sort of gritty uh, you know, woman going on a killing spree type movies. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, this was, I think everybody, well, this was my second time seeing it. I had seen it before. Uh, and I had mentioned the movie to Adam and then we decided to cover it. Um, what was your reaction to this film? My reaction? Either Whew. of you, whoever wants to speak first. It's, uh, oh. yeah, I'll go since I already opened my mouth. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is a difficult movie to react to because it isn't, it isn't, I mean, there, oh, man, it's, yeah, it's, it's a fascinating, I'm glad, fascinating. I'm glad you're going first. I don't even know where Yeah, I, I don't know why I stepped in this, but uh, <laughs> no, it's, it is as, as you say, it's a rape revenge movie, but. Uh, you know, that was already kind of an established genre by the time of this movie, yeah. but it's, it's, it's not gratuitous in the way that, say, uh, I, I spit on your grave is or anything. Yeah. It's actually relatively subdued as the genre goes. And it's it's very ambiguous in its intentions. I mean, yes, yeah, she goes out and it's revenge and there's parts where you feel like, yeah, she's going after guys and they deserve it. There's other times where she's just crazy and. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a real complexity yeah. to it. She's going after people that for no particularly good reason at all. It's uh, it's fascinating to it's a movie where the main character is mute. Yeah, she, which is she, which is a trope that they borrowed from earlier movies, by the way. That's uh, OK. Yeah. But uh, it's very effective. I thought it, it's it's fascinating because it isolates her from everyone. It's like she has yeah. no. You know, you, she has no way of just of, of, of talking about the trauma she's been through yeah. with anyone. She's in her own head. She is disconnected from all of society. At the same time, she's living in New York City in the yeah. early 80s. People all around her. It's uh, I, I, I really found this movie fascinating, but I'm having a hard time describing my opinion of it. <laughs> no, I, 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 I get you on that. I get, I, and I think, yeah. I think the point about uh, her being mute is very interesting because on the one hand, it almost gives it like a Charlie Chaplin quality because it's a physical yeah. performance. And there are even yeah. times, that she even does employ it for humor in a few key moments, but it yeah. makes it like a very fascinating movie to watch just because you're largely watching a physical performance. It also, not only are the people around her not able to know what she's thinking. You're not even really able to know what she's thinking 100%. Yes. You kind of have to, you're kind of constantly guessing, what is she doing? Why is she doing that? And yes. like you were saying, the thing that I find most intriguing about the movie is I saw it because I've been, I've been doing like a vigilante type RPG and I got really into like these vigilante movies. And this came up when I was, I looked up like movies inspired by Death Wish. And this was one of the films that came up as sort of, being directly inspired by the movie. And I thought that um, just in the context of that genre, what was interesting about it was she really is walking this line of there's like a certain amount of very valid justification for her going off the rails and doing what she's doing. But half the people she's killing don't seem to really be doing anything. And and it leads to all these these questions in your mind as a viewer, like um, like is it is it is it because she's just gone completely crazy and is just hates men now and is just killing any man that exhibits even a hint of you know any kind of sexual interest towards her or is it more complicated where she just genuinely can't discern that anymore like there's like she, she's like she's like for granted she's killing people and it's and it's and it's uh it's unethical but 
maybe she has a moral foundation of she's trying to kill the bad guys, but she's just incapable of knowing who the bad guys are because she just can't interpret all of these interactions appropriately. And so that's what I find fascinating about it. And that's that's really made even more intense because you cannot know what her inner dialogue is. So yeah, there's there's a feeling I got too that like it, obviously revenge is a factor, but I almost feel like she's so traumatized by what happened to her that it's the power of what she's doing. She kind of gets okay. this power. It's like her way of yeah. You know, it's Dealing like with she's it. terrified. And so she's now found this way that she's strong by doing these things. I, I, that's that's kind of a, a I, big reading I got at points in the movie. Well, I think, no, I think you're right. Because I think, number one, if you notice, like, with each, she slowly becomes like this, not like a superhero, but like this this other there's, character. Like there's definitely the a superhero alter ego vibe. Yeah this movie it feels like midway through it almost feels like it's going to turn into a superhero yeah. movie and then it it yeah. go it just gets far weird and there is a costume but it's explained within the con the, the context of the of the movie but yeah. the first like the first few killings are almost like i think the i think initially she just takes the gun for self-defense like that's my, yeah. my she takes the gun and she's trying to get rid of the body parts of the guy who had it she was raped twice at the beginning of the movie and that's kind of the thing that uh, I mean, there might be another movie that does this, but that's sort of the thing that sets this film apart is there's these two brutal rapes that she endures. And you get the feeling that if she, if the first one had been the only one that happened, the rest of the movie would have been her grappling with the trauma in a more grounded way. But the second one is kind of what pushes her over the edge. And well, so that's the one where she ends up killing her rapist, yeah. too. Yeah. So that's, that's, that, that, that was that's like a cathartic so kill. I, I got to tell you. Yeah. Having seen that guy's skull smash him with the egg was yeah. was pretty satisfying because yeah, like, she oh, kills him with an iron. Like... She's a seamstress, so she kills him with an iron, which I thought. Was <laughs> but that yeah. seems also very interesting because she's gripping an apple the whole time. It's like a glass apple. Yeah. Or something. And so my thinking was, well, this is like, it's kind of like the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. Like she's becoming aware of evil in this scene, and so well, this is the scene where she. The gun, the like, there's the gun appears in that scene. She kills yeah. the guy, and it's what sort of brings her on the whole path that she goes on. Yeah, um, it being an Abel Ferrara movie, it's like you never want to doubt whether something is religious symbolism. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like he yeah. he is not shy about religious. No, I mean, symbolism. there's the apple, and she literally ends the film in a nun costume. So I mean, it's yeah, it's very and and again, and that and and a nun like that appears in um the bad lieutenant too, if I remember. So, you know, that's like, a, um, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you're right. um, haven't but, seen and she's right. actually in that movie too. She's in the bad Lieutenant. She I think she wrote that screenplay. Um, yes, but, but, uh, but what was it? The, no, but the first kill after that, I cut, might have my order wrong, but I think she's just disposing of one of the body parts and some guy starts chasing her and she shoots him more out of fear of, either being caught or because she thinks he's trying to attack her or something. It's, it's not like, a it's not like she's out hunting for people to kill when that happens. And it, yeah. it and slowly she's st- like, so she starts putting her hair back. Then she starts putting on makeup. Then she just starts looking more deadly in general and then going out and hunting and killing people. But they, I don't know if you guys noticed, but in the second rape scene, there's this off key, trumpet or sax sound that's going there's like a horn and a sax yeah going. no of course i notice it that's, okay it's yeah, like the sting whenever she's about to kill somebody but that yeah. doesn't reappear until she kills the sheep you know so that and that's the scene where i think a lot of the stuff that adam's talking about where you're like hey wait a second what did this guy do exactly like there's another guy that she kills who it's like what did he do but it's a little bit more yeah, the shake, the, shake, the, the, shake, the shake. It's 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 like he's sleazy, but he's not. He's he's on the level. It's like, oh, yeah. here's money. You want to come yeah. back with me? It's, <laughs> it's there's a lot of sleazy guys that get shot in this. Yeah, the sheet gets yeah. shot because he's basically trying to turn into a prostitute. Um, at least I don't know if he's like straight up like uh, he's not a pimp in this scenario, but at least he's offering her money for sex. Um, the guy that lures lures I'm using. Uh, her back to his studio, he's set up as a photographer. I, I think that guy is actually a professional photographer. Now, he's probably trying to get laid a little too enthusiastically, and he was sleazy because he just got done talking to his girlfriend. But, like, I, I don't know if I feel as good about him getting killed as the rapist getting killed. I feel I like think, the rapist yeah. I'm cool with. 
Yeah. I think the first, I think this photographer, you can almost write off when it happens because you think, oh, she thinks he's going to rape her. Like, that's what she thinks is going to. Now, granted, she goes back willingly. So she's, you know, yeah, I think maybe if he has in mind what she's going to do. Yeah, no, but, that was premeditated. I, I, I'm i going to veto the photographer as well. She doesn't even leave the though. elevator to shoot him. I mean, it's like premeditated. That's what yeah. she went there to do. Yeah, yeah. 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 Not like. But, <laughs> but I do the, feel like when you first see that scene, it's not as clear as the scene when you get to the sheik, and then it's like, wait, what's going on yeah. here exactly? I, I got to catch a shake, not sheik. Uh, uh, sorry, shake, in the Middle shake. East too long. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. makes my teeth hurt. But well, and I have no. Excuse, is it shake? Jeez, too, it's shake. So. Yeah. Yeah. Who knew? So I, I man, everyone says that wrong. I'm glad you corrected me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that, it's common. I mean, no shame. Just I, I, I for my sake, I, I, you know, I got to bring it up. No, it's, you're, it's, you're it's, enough pain out of us. We'll we'll use it. Uh, I'd like to point out. I I was surprised at the second rape. Um, the first one was is incredibly sudden and brutal yeah. and shocking. Um, also, uh, before I get too deep into describing rape, one of the things that most leapt out about this movie to me was like the kind of French cinema cinematography that it had, where like you know these yeah. wonderful neat angles and like a lot of uh, close ups of objects that had these these this wonderful angularness to it. So like this movie is really pretty to watch. Um, but yeah, uh, the the first rape was was really brutal and disgusting, uh, and then the second one. Like almost feels like it isn't gonna go there because it start. It's the guy is trying to rob her house, yeah. and he just kind of defaults to the next crime. You, al- you think almost of. think he's gonna help her at first when he says, "What happened to you?" You almost think that like, "Oh, he's got an ounce of compassion," and then it goes. In yeah, place. nah. Yeah. I, I, I would I like didn't to think that. that. I know that was my when I first saw it. That was my, <laughs> I thought, "Oh, he's gonna help her." You know, and I was like, yeah. "Oh no." I, aren't you a hopeful individual? Um, <laughs> so no, I, I would like to point out that. I had a moment um, because I've been watching Mel Brooks movies where I was like, okay, if she gets raped one more time, this is a comedy though, right? Like it would take one more to push it over to absurdity. I mean, I don't think that it it wasn't filmed in a comedic style, but I think that I get what you're saying. Like I, I, so here's my thinking on this. I, cause I, cause when I've mentioned this movie to people and I explain that there's two rapes in the beginning, they're like, wait, that's kind of ridiculous. He gets raped in the twice in the same day. I think it's just a requirement of explaining why she goes so over the edge. Is, is yeah, the, you know, they yeah. they get the they get the broth right. Uh, it, it was just it's really alarming because I wasn't expecting I, I was expecting a crime in the second one, but I wasn't expecting another rape. Yeah. Um, and it honestly made me really root for that guy to die. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. super great when he got killed. Uh, also, that forty five is super goddamn loud in the foley. I mean, it would be right. Yes. And like no one seems yes. to notice it ever. She just blows so many people away in this. I think village. it's New York. You know what I mean? Like no, I mean like I live in an area. Yeah, it's 1981 in New York. I, I think I, that's a fair. I, place. I've lived in a place where people got <laughs> shot, and you would hear gunshots, and nobody would call the police for, for real. So I think it's definitely, uh, yeah. you know. Um, but uh, yeah, on the look of the movie, I remember when the movie started. When the opening credits l- l- have the black and white feel to them, and it's like being a being an early '80s Abel Ferrara movie, you know, being an independent movie, I was I was thinking, oh, this is a black and white movie, and then like the movie starts and you jump to like that fashion scene with the super yeah. '80s colors, <laughs> it was just like it really kind of it just threw it's, me off. I'm it, like, whoa, okay, this is this is the opposite of black and white. The, the movie it came out in eighty one and it looks very nineteen eighty one. It's got that yes. right between the seventies and the eighties look exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it really that was one thing I really liked about this movie. Actually, it was just as someone that spent time in New York around that time period, it was just like this is a really interesting time capsule of New York at this yeah. time. Just the look and feel of it that you don't usually, you know, more Hollywood movies just aren't that ground level most of yeah. the time. No, def- I, I mean, and I like the way the movie was shot. I liked, I, I really liked the sound effects of the film too. Like, I liked the, the that yeah. horn, that horn yeah. coming back, and then, and then in the last scene at the at the Halloween party, there's a guy playing the horn. The guy also has a turban, mm-hmm. and I think that's supposed to be a callback to the shape. You know, so it's like a, it, it's an interesting develop because you know it's, it feels like that's where the theme is now just constantly playing. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
yeah and, and once again we talk about the gun being loud the horns are just as loud as the gun pretty much every time yeah. they come up it's uh it, it's a it was a just fascinating in that respect yeah, this this movie pretty relentlessly attacks your senses like it's it's yeah. actually pretty cool um I, I wasn't expecting it to be that like in your face and visceral, but it uh, it doesn't let up. Not really ever. Uh, there's it's, always either it's something like, yeah, there's a horn blaring or a gun exploding or it's something loud and like really impossible to miss happening at you. Yeah, and it's only like an hour and twenty minutes long. Sure, which, for this, which is short. great. It's it knows exactly yeah. what it's doing and it and it, it's, it stops. <laughs> there's a lot of very efficient characterization, like that yes. one friend of hers who's like the tough yes. New York girl. She's only got like two real moments in the movie, but they're all, she appears elsewhere too. She's, but they put her in just enough that she, by she's the end, hugely important. If you took yeah. that character out, it would really weaken the movie because I, I feel like that's. I have a little off the final line of the movie that she, well, one time, one word she says in the whole movie ties into that character. It's, uh, it's like she feels like, oh, I thought, I, I thought you would approve of what I'm doing. Well, it's like, you don't want to kill all men? I'm like, this comes out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I really yeah, like that. She calls her sister, oh. she calls her sister at the end when, um, yes. Which, yeah. And she's holding the she's holding the knife like a penis before she before she stabs. Right? I don't know if you notice that. It's oh, it's, yeah. it's like comedically obvious the way that she's holding the knife. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, I thought that the uh, that that and also the guy that plays the um, the head of whatever seems I don't know what you call it the the, the company that that she works for. I, yeah. I was stunned that that dude was portrayed as straight. Well, yeah, I, I was, was I was wondering early on. I, I was think like, that was is intentional. He... I think yeah. they wanted you to think he was gay initially, and then you suddenly realize he's leering at her just like every, and so it sort of throws you off because what? Because I feel like I feel like I'd ha I I kind of looked for it the second time I watch it. I think I'm right about this, but I would probably need a third view to really decide. But I feel like they emphasize this guy potentially being gay more at the very beginning, and then that sort of slowly becomes less the case and so i think mm -hmm. that yeah i think i think that's intentional um but yeah i have to say this is a movie that's really efficient with its characters all the side like most of the victims are really fascinating characters like one thing yeah, we didn't the guy, the guy, on, the, the guy yeah. on the street corner who's yeah, um, yeah. you know chases her down with the bag which is the first killing you're like whoa i don't oh think the that guy that's like hitting on all the women he's like hey baby yeah, like, yeah. it's like he's a yeah. jerk but yeah. you know, it's, but is he a dangerous rapist? Nah. No, he, he oh, looked he like a—he's like a jerk from The Sopranos. He just got this, like you know, like you know, uh, Vinny Barbarino type, uh, yeah. type personality. Um, yeah, and he's talking um, to that guy that's not answering him. It's just I, yeah, the blind I, guy there. Yeah. You're not missing anything. I love <laughs> the, the one where the guy shoots himself. That's one of the most fascinating scenes, um, mm -hmm. because. You know, she she's 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 listening to him, and it's funny because I remember I remember that I didn't notice it the first time, but when I watched it the second time, I'm like, wait a second, she's mute. So he's just been talking this whole time. Is does he know that she doesn't speak, or has he just been talking and hasn't noticed this? But uh, his story's interesting, and then like for a moment, he's almost sympathetic, and then he's like, I strangled her cat, and it's like, oh, that's like, right. and that's when she pulls out the gun and decides to to shoot, but yeah. it doesn't work. And that's one of the comedic moments I was talking about where she kind of pulls the trigger and there's a click and there's like a look of surprise on her face. And he grabs the gun and he puts it, I think he points it at her and then he points it at his own head and he blows his brains out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a very interesting kill in the movie. Um, yeah, because I mean, he, she didn't kill him. He killed him. <laughs> you yeah, know, she tried yeah. to, it was attempted murder, but like she just leaves after that. She's like, oh Jesus, I gotta get out of here. But did he know he was going to die, or did he think that it was empty because it just clicked the first time? That was so. I don't know. The guy was kind of bottoming out. I mean, he yeah. was. His life had been ruined, and he. I, I can see that it was a legitimate suicide. It's. Uh, yeah, because his other was his wife had left him for another woman, right? That was his. Yeah. Wife, caught her in bed with another woman. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, I, I was just wondering why is she listening to like is is she just deciding whether she's going to kill him. You know. That's what it felt like. Yeah, I mean that that once again that goes back to the fascination with this character, just watching him intently. 
Because yeah, it is. Yeah, it, I don't know. But go ahead. Well, she kind of be, like her name's Thana, so my thinking is she kind of becomes like this personification of death. In mm-hmm. the movie. I mean, mm-hmm. um, so I don't know. It's just it's just interesting to me. But uh, yeah, I don't know. The um, what did you guys think of the the landlady downstairs? The, uh, <laughs> I, I, the yeah, action she, of it, the uh, you know, the voice, like what were you? I mean, like she's she's a pretty arch little character. You know, like, um, again, she's it's efficiently made, um, maybe a little bit stereotypical, I guess. But, like, I, not unbelievable. Like, you could see that being a nosy landlady. I, I was kind of stunned that the movie went out of its way to spare her dog. Yeah, I, I, it's Abel, Abel. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Abel Ferrara is just a big softy. I think that's really where that comes from. <laughs> I think I, I I I think part of that is they want to they don't want you to totally hate her character and I think that um, it's also consistent with her pulling the trigger when the guy strangled the cat. Yes. Yeah. So, well, because um, because it is a mystery, you don't realize she did it. Because I, I I think she leaves the dog after the scene with the guy with the cat the cat murderer, doesn't she? I'm trying to remember the sequence. But I, I, I think I think she might. I think it's I think it's when she's going to go to the party. She doesn't want them snooping in her room or something. Is maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. So it is after. So it's like I feel like she like, was going to kill the dog, but she kind of has a second second thoughts and I, well she's like mean when she's dragging him through traffic and she just looks like a wicked woman like just like pulling this dog like you know um yeah i thought she was gonna oh. throw it in front of one of the cars when i first well, i think she was i think she was trying to pull it in front okay. of one of the cars if you ever one of, if someone shouts from the car, hey what are you trying to do mm. with that you know so i shout something along the line of you know I, I got the impression she was trying to get it run over people like i'm not running over your dog <laughs> New Yorkers are just like, look, we'll run over a homeless person, but a dog is too far. That's a, yeah, it's, man, people have their limits. What did you think of the last, the last scene, the uh, not the last the turkey, scene, the turkey the, shoot? Yeah, yeah, the the, the Halloween party. Uh, it it was pretty much the only way this movie could end, right? <laughs> yeah, I could I couldn't imagine yeah. another ending for this, uh, except her complete degeneration into an absolute massacre. That is a perfect ending for a movie. For this movie, it's the most perfect ending. Um, I loved it. Um, and I, I loved that every single guy that got shot, like, it took longer to shoot them, and they got yeah. to react to the fact they are going to get shot more. And they all seemed to get more and more surprised. Like, there was yeah. that one guy that was in the corner, like, barely paying attention, and he was like, hey, is that girl got a gun? Those guys all think they got shot. Oh, is she going to shoot me? Then he gets shot, and he's like... <laughs> Oh, how unfortunate. <laughs> it's yeah. such a weird reaction. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's definitely... Uh, <laughs> there's also all these little touches, like the guy arguing with his wife about the vasectomy that he said he was yeah, going to get. Mm-hmm. That was, I like guy's <laughs> one of the first guys to get it. Yeah, you know, uh, you know right away, you're like, okay, they're, they're showing me this guy for a reason, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah. So, um, but also, just, also, I did like how the mood of the room turns where she goes upstairs with them and people think, Oh, they're just going to have fun. And then yeah. the gunshots and then it kind of takes a moment for it to register with everybody. So there's kind of this in between period where they're just confused. And so and she comes downstairs with the gun and it's like, Oh, she shoots the guy who goes up there. Yeah. yeah. It's uh yeah. Yeah. The guy yeah. on the stairs gets shot. And then, yeah. Then more people get shot. I felt bad that the, the, the keyboardist got shot. I thought, cause I remember yeah. seeing the keyboardist, and I remember thinking, like, like I hope this guy doesn't get any. Like, you know, just like <laughs> he just looks like he's really into the music. You know what I mean? It'd be like shooting the yeah. horn player. You know. But. In other words, monstrous. Yeah, but but it's it's a it's a cool ending, and it definitely it's got like a um, I don't know, it just has like a cool look to it because it's a Halloween party, none but the yeah. gun. It's just it's just very visual, um, and I think also whoops, I think we're picking up something here. Um, yeah, I apologize. I it uh, it completes the transformation of her character in a very satisfying way, I think. Yeah, I. Uh... Yep. Oh, jeez. I, 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 oddly, I have my computer going through my headphones, but for some reason, it's also making sounds through the speakers. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of perplexed. I apologize to everyone. No worries. No worries. 
Failure uh, of well, sabotage. I mean, that works for talking about this movie because again, that's exactly what this movie does. It, it just pounds these like sounds directly into your brain. So there I, you I, go, folks. You've experienced. I was tempted to find out what the what the flat note was that they were playing. Like there were two there were <laughs> two contrasting notes, and I was I was like, I'm going to take out my keyboard phone and figure out what notes these are. And I was like, no, that's, that's not going to be the soundtrack. Anymore. Yeah, so <laughs> soundtrack is just that <laughs> that, that uh, sound uh, over I don't, and over again for I don't know. It just it yeah. just worked. It just sounds like a well. It's got like a note of panic to it, you know. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's really blaring, cool. and I don't know. It just it just cuts through everything that's going on, you know. This this yeah. is one of those movies where you know there's no other way this movie can end with her dying. Which I'm going back to the Thanos thing. There's kind of that Thanatos, the urge to seeking your death, is uh you know is another thing the Thanos thing can refer to. I feel like there is, you know, there's just no other way, no other way this was going to end. It was just a matter of how she uh, died at the end. Yeah. Is my feeling. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know. It's it's a short movie. It's what was it like one one hundred and uh, not one hundred, like a, an hour and eighteen minutes. Is that the yeah something it, like that? Right in that in that. Yeah, it's yeah. super. It, this movie hits like an ice pick to the skull. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's fast. It's direct. It's brutal. Um, actually, like a lot of the scenes kind of reminded me of American Psycho. Like especially that yeah. last scene where she was just shooting yeah. everybody. That had I a real American that. Psycho vibe. No, uh, I, I can definitely see that because it's also a similar thing where, I don't know, it's it's like the way that she slowly sort of gets into this thing where she's concealing all these crimes. I mean, obviously, American Psycho handles it differently, but a lot of the movie is about her disposing of the body and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, and I got to say, back in, it just it just made me long for the days when it was so much, there, were no, there weren't cameras everywhere, and you could just drop body parts in any trash can and know that she, no one was going to trace it back to you. It's like, my, those times are gone. My favorite one is, she cuts up the body and she starts to, disposing of the parts in different places. And my favorite one is she walks by a guy who's just loading his car up with suitcases. <laughs> <laughs> that was pure comedy there. Yeah. yeah. And you even yeah. see like the light play he's going to like was it Georgia or somewhere yeah. he's from. It's like, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna get home. And, and then, then you're thinking, what's that guy gonna do? Is he gonna call the police or is he gonna panic and just get rid of the the limb? And you're like, what's yeah. the he just puts it in another car, just yeah. goes all around America. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lines up in Burt Reynolds' car. What's in this bag? Oh God! <laughs> but I, but I, I did really like the efficiency of this movie. I'm really fond of films that can do everything in a in a condensed period of time if they can do it well. And I feel like this one, there really isn't anything that needs to be added to help explain anything or any of that. And yeah. it's just you know nice and sleek. What um, was that? Uh, what was that crime movie you had us watch? It was the Friends of Someone or Other. Yeah. Friends oh, of Eddie Coyle. Friends of yeah, Eddie Coyle. Yeah, yeah. It, it reminded me of the, that movie a little bit, too. Friends of Eddie okay. Coyle. Let's have a little, well, I mean, they even have that weird clown mask in both movies. Yeah, no, that's sure. true. Yeah, Friends of, the, Friends of Eddie Coyle is a classic. They just did, um, on local radio, they were doing, like, the, the best of Boston movie movies set in Boston. And the Friends yeah. of Eddie Coyle, I think, was the first movie they covered. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I'd never heard about it until you uh, forced that one on me, and uh, I got to say, I forced on everybody. Actually, I've been trying oh, to get really? to watch that for yeah. a long time. By the yeah. time we did the podcast, hey, you son of a bitch! I actually really enjoyed that movie. Yeah, yeah, that, I love uh, that. Movie. It, it sticks with you. Um, this one does too. I, I got to tell you, I, I got to give this movie like four out of five stars. Um, I, I'm really impressed with it. It's it's a yeah. beautiful movie. The performances are really really good. Um, yeah. they're intense and uh, sort of like uh, an over the top way, but also not in an unbelievable way. It's just heightened, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm trying to think of a, another movie that does that thing. So, um, what was that? What was that schlock uh, movie we watched where everybody was melting on the toilet? Um, uh, it kind of, Street again, trash. that was another yeah, yeah, one I made you guys trash. trash. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> you, you have a, you have a taste. Adam, but like, yeah, but well, Friends of Eddie Coyle is way higher than Street Trash. I think we should we should all yeah uh, yeah. I, 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 well, I mean, okay, but but Street that. Trash does the same thing this movie does, where it really puts you uncomfortably close to the characters, and they're yeah. all like sweaty and emotionally unstable. Um, 
Same thing. Same thing with street trash. Uh, and there's th- this there's an efficiency with street trash where it just slams you to the next most intense moment. Um, and this movie is an absolute like drunk carnival ride of doing that. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, we're comparing to other, other directors and movies and stuff too. I, I mean, it, it's got a similarity to one thing I like about Coen brothers movies is every yeah. character in a Coen brothers movie will be a character. It doesn't matter. If someone's checking into a hotel and they talk to them for 30 seconds. You're going to remember that hotel clerk. They're going yeah. to be a memorable character in that time. Yeah. And this movie has that. I, one thing, one thing I'll say for this movie is I've, I haven't seen that many Abel for our movies. I've liked the ones I have. Now I'm like, man, I don't know why I haven't just gone through and watched. <laughs> Well, he's got kind of like a sleazy reputation, and I think that sometimes overshadows. And I haven't seen that many either, but the ones I have seen, they've all been really yeah. good movies. Like, like I know, Martin, like almost Martin Scorsese level movies when you see them. Yeah, like they're just very good character studies. I think. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so, I, uh, I'm probably going to watch New Rose Hotel this weekend, and uh, which uh, will also was was written by. Uh, the uh, woman who uh, stars in this and uh, wrote oh, Bad Lieutenant. Uh, yeah, what's her name? Uh, I, I'm, Zoe, I'm sorry, I should have her name in front of me. It's yeah, Zoe, to, to, Zoe to Merlis, I think, or Zoe Lund, I think. Is the... And man, like, what a look the, the main character in this one has. Like, what an incredible yeah. look. Just like, and like the fact that she transforms visually throughout the movie. Like, she has this, she goes from being this almost like, a prey animal like there's something really fragile about her to being the absolute opposite she she's a barracuda at the end of this film and there's no moment of it you don't see and it's still so subtle that you kind of you sort of don't see it while it's going on and then all of a sudden there's some switch that gets flipped fantastic performance absolute power yeah it's a very good physical performance it's very impressive well, and the fact she couldn't deliver a single line of dialogue until the very last word of the character, and you still get that much character out of her, like it's it's intense and great. Yeah, yeah. which also makes you wonder what was the why was she mute? You know what I mean? Because it's sort of like so she so she was able to speak apparently, right? Like that it was, was a like, psychological thing to some yeah. degree. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but yeah, she's also also like I have to say like the like the bad lieutenant is one of the other movies of his I've seen, and that is just an outstanding movie. That's... And I think she wrote. <laughs> They say that it was written by her and Abel Ferrara, but she always maintained that she wrote the whole thing. So I don't know what the reality is. Um, Cause I, you know, and I'm sure there was like, maybe she wrote it and then they made other adjustments, but that, that movie is, that's a really great movie. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm looking at Abel Ferrara movies right now. And holy shit, yeah. dude. Yeah. Like, I see why this guy got the reputation he did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, well the bad lieutenant, was like, but it doesn't mean he's not a good director at the same time. Wasn't the bad lieutenant like NC seventeen when it came out? I think it may have been. Yeah, it was around the era of NC seventeen movies, so it would make sense that it was. But man, and that, one, and that yeah. like the title is like it's like how like okay, how bad is this guy? And the whole place, he's, he's bad. bad. He is bad. <laughs> Did they yeah. remake that's, bad? That's lieutenant? maybe one of. Cardi There's Kytel a Nicolas Cage movie, actually. Bad Lieutenant, Port of New Orleans, which is uh, I, which is supposed to be, which has nothing to do with the first movie. No, none of the oh, same. Oh, the sequel, to, the, the, the sequel to the to sequel Batman. with Nicolas Cage. I, I've seen clips from that. And I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, I have not seen that one, stuff. so I've only heard how bad it is, you know, that, but I have not yeah. seen it. Yeah, uh, I, I, I like oh, it. it's Harvey Keitel in the first one. That's it's, cool. It's, it's a really oh, yeah. good If you haven't performance. seen Bad Lieutenant, Joel, that's, that it is, yeah. it is just an A-plus movie. No it's, it just made the list. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably his best performance as an actor. Like, I mean, there's other really? really? There. Whoa, oh. I, I like Harvey Keitel, so that's... that's like, like, yeah, do you think that's overstating it, or do you think that's a fair statement? Yeah, totally fair statement. I Damn mean, yeah. Like, I gotta watch it now. You, well, like, yeah. he's like not phoning in that performance at all. That is like a very, very. What? Not, how many people could have done that performance? Yeah. That was that was intense. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really really rough really rough movie. Just be prepared 
for a very like the very bad lieutenant. That's you know like it's in the title. It tells, it, it, it's not like it, it's not like it sideswipes you, but it still feels like a surprise when you realize how bad he is. Yeah, so. it's incredibly bad lieutenant. Um, okay, <laughs> I sold. Well, there you go. I I yeah. I, well, okay. So the fact that he was able to the the director was able to coax the performances he did out of the people in this movie like that just sort of makes me want to watch everything he ever made <laughs> that, that's where i am right now i'm like why why have i only dipped my toe in his career it's uh well, i mean I was, you can't see every single movie that came out from the beginning of time you know it's one of these things yeah. where you know oh, there's I also know. there's also i have like a long backlist of movies it's like i've been meaning to see this movie forever but i haven't seen it because yeah of it. I, i'm just catching up on kurosawa this month yeah. so like yeah no I, i've got a backlist too so that's that's kind of what it is you know because oh, wow. i've done i've done dives on gilliam lynch um <laughs> i've done dives on uh Who's the guy who did uh I can't remember the names of all these directors. Gilliam and Lynch came to mind right away because I, I recognized their style when I was a kid and I, I caught up on those. I did uh Quentin Tarantino, he was easy to catch up on. I, I did Spike Lee recently. Um He's got and like, you know Spike, what I like I actually like Summer of Sam. That was one of my favorite movies that he That did, was a good movie. Though. I yeah, like, I, like I think that. it kind of bombed, if I remember. I don't I it doesn't feel like it's got the recognition that some of his other films have but i thought it was hey, i've heard of summer of sam did i watch that one i gotta look that up now well, i gotta say i had totally forgotten abel for our remade invasion of the body snatchers yeah, yeah. Uh, had, I, I remember that i did see it and i, I liked it but it's like I, for some reason it i it totally left my memory i'm like oh wow i, I vaguely <laughs> recall seeing that it came out i think around the same time that the remake of the blob came out right wasn't that? Uh, Blob was earlier because was I, okay. I that was in high school when Blob came out, and I was in college when I, I I can remember watching the Body Snatchers remake on video with with Matt Janovic, who you know, but uh, okay, okay. You, you know, he's he's a huge Abel Ferrara fan, so you okay, know, maybe watch it, but uh, yeah, maybe, maybe so, you can give some guidance to Joel on what uh what order to watch these movies. In. I I will ask him today. I've, I've actually got him in my Discord chat. Yeah. Now I could. Uh, oh no, he just logged out. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> what? But yeah, definitely check out the Bad Lieutenant Joel. That is like uh, totally yeah. worth you, watching. That, that's it's a, it's a little bit. It takes. It's it's a little slow burn at first. You have to kind of. It's like it's like those seventies character study movies where you have to sort of follow the character a little bit. But once it starts going, it's very interesting. Yeah, and she's in it too. She has like a minor role in the movie. Um, uh, if, if I had an actress of this talent, I would put her in every goddamn movie I made. <laughs> like, I, I wouldn't hesitate. I don't I mean, think she, she, she hasn't been in too many films. I don't think. Right? She said. Character. She said she 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 didn't want to get get uh, pigeonholed in being able for our movies. That's why she wasn't in any other movies of his. She honestly, she kept working with him all the way through the late nineties as a writer. But. Uh, Okay. And then, of course, she appeared in Bad Lieutenant. But yeah, she she kind of avoided being in all his movies. So, which suggests that he would always ask her to be in yep. his movies. Yeah. I, I would have. Again, if oh, I got yeah. a performance like this out of somebody, I would have been like, "I've got another role for you," and it's all of yeah. them. It's every goddamn role. Yeah, she was just trying to avoid typecasting. That's the reason and she, she wasn't. And she died kind of tragically too. She was pretty young when she died. So. Oh no, that sucks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I yeah. wanted to, I wanted to alert you to that, so it's not like like remember that actress that was in the um, Wing Chun movie that we saw, and we found you know it was like a surprise that she had died. I don't yeah. Know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like, and yeah. she was like, it was like she was like a discovery because it was like, wow, this woman is like, it's like a new Bruce Lee or something, and then it's like, oh, she doesn't have any other movies because she died very very tragically. So. Yeah, but I, I read uh, I read the, her Wikipedia page. According to that, she she like she apparently just did heroin. Like that was her her life revolved around doing heroin. Okay. She like always was into heroin. Then she moved to Germany near the end of her life, and she had to switch to cocaine. And then she had a heart attack and died. In her. Okay, right, don't, don't switch to cocaine. I think this well, I think the heroin. She was she was sick on with her heroin. Own path. Yeah, but I'll bet the heroin probably did its job, and then. The <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, I I think it probably primed her for a uh, cocaine. Yeah, because the, the I, I, I read that of course heroin to it's, it's people. I've known people that are junkies, and I I will I will strongly advocate against heroin for anybody. The the <laughs> um, it need to be said. 
the the Wikipedia article uh, when I read it, there was a quote in there where somebody said about her like she didn't just like heroin, she believed in it. Like it was yes. like, a, like a whole other Kenneth, level. I think it was Kenneth Anger said that. Okay, the you got there, or do I yeah. have the right person? Let's see. But, yeah, it definitely yeah. sounded pretty, very very involved in heroin. Well, it um, makes her role in Bad Lieutenant really interesting. If you remember. yeah, it makes you wonder like you know was was that, was that actual heroin in that scene or you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a. Did yeah, Harvey Keitel know, shoot up heroin? More for Joel's sake, that's, he that's ask Matt. Did Harvey Keitel actually shoot up heroin in that? Uh, that because he was very. Didn't he stay in character that whole movie? Pretty much. But, so I mean, if, uh, if I, you're I, doing if you're do if you're doing the whole stay in character thing, and you're a drug addict in a movie, are you does does that include doing the drugs that we see? Like, is he? I, I don't remember if he was smoking crack or heroin or what, but whatever he was smoking, like, was he actually smoking that stuff or? Yeah. You know? I don't know. I'd be curious yeah. on the trivia, but um, yeah, what, she didn't method, just method know method heroin. Right? She believed in it. Oh, Jesus Christ! the The way they talk about her being addicted to heroin is like, it's like her religion. That's yeah, that's unbelievable. yeah. It's very yeah. intense. It seems very intense. Maybe I mean maybe they're putting on like a poetic, sort of meaningful way of understanding it because they knew her. I don't know, but. Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't know how about many that, people are doing drugs in New York in the eighties. I I think the fact that they're singling her out as uh, for special the, mention in this regard says something. You know, this with the crowd she was in that they're uh, like, oh, she's the one who really, really liked okay. her. Okay, so it, I've known people that are that that take heroin too. Like, I think everybody, if you swim in the right circles, is at least one kind of drunky or burnout, druggy or drunk or burnout friend. Like you have those friends. But you have to understand, your one friend you know who is into heroin, they have a whole other circle of friends who are into heroin. And I yeah. got a feeling that that's the people that are talking about her. And they're like, yeah, no, we do heroin. She was heroin. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, uh, that's, that's my read. That's my read, too. Um, okay. Jesus, wow. <laughs> so yeah, because, again, I, I know my junkie friends, and they, they have a pecking order about who loves who loves different drugs the most. You know, she, well, she's like, the, if, if Hunter S. Thompson's signature drug is acid, then like, yeah, the, then her signature drug is heroin, apparently. Okay. So, Jesus. It's sad, though, because, I mean, the, the, that she must yeah. have been like a really brilliant writer because the, the bad lieutenant is an outstanding uh, you know, piece of work. I, I, yeah, well, Ferrara says on that page, too, that it basically that kind of ruined her. It was like heroin just kind of ruined her as, a, as an actress. So it's a, it is a real tragedy. Uh, that's but, agonizing. Uh, but anyways, you know, just to, you know, bring it back to the movie and not. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> this uh, movie it kind of sprawls out a little bit, though. You, you sort of have to do that because, like, yeah. it's it's it, it's an impact. This, this movie's yeah. a, a meteor strike. No, it's, it's a very, I mean, I definitely recommend it. I think your four out of five is a really solid, you know, recommendation. Yeah. It's a four out of five yeah. that could have been a five out of five under the right circumstances. Do you know yeah, I mean? like Bad yeah. Lieutenant's five out of five. Yeah. That is absolutely yeah. peak perfection for yeah. our. This is kind of, it's it, very. It's got, it's, there's it's, a little it's, creakiness it's, to it, right? There's a little creakiness here and there, and that sort of brings it. Some of the creakiness is part of its appeal, but it still does yeah. bring the rating down. You know? well, four out of so, five is not a bad review yeah. by any means. Oh, no, I, no, I, no, I, I really I, like this movie. I, I rarely give something that high of a review, but I, I was seriously yeah. impressed with this movie. Yeah. yeah so, so again, you know, it gets, you know, the vigilante movie. It's also, it's a, I guess the one thing I do want to say, it's a very different kind of vigilante movie because it is one where there is so much ambiguity in it, like you guys were saying. Yes. And that really... Yeah. That really adds to it a lot. Um, it it, it yeah, makes not, you, it makes you really cathartic. wonder. Yeah, huh? you're not, not a cathartic. Let's cheer on the vigilante movie by any means. It's 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 pretty fascinating. It's it's, it's one where I feel like my emotion with it is you're kind of cheering her on, but you're also yeah. doubting the whole time. So it's like you are excited, like okay, but wait, why did that guy have to get shot? Like okay, I'm here, but. Oh. There's I, yes. every every encounter. There's suspense. Is she? She's looking at these people intently. You can see the wheels turning in your yeah. mind. You're like, is she going to kill this person? Is yeah. the thing going on in every encounter she has with someone? And it really, what? really kept me fascinated the whole way through. One of the best scenes like that is when the boss asks her to go to the um, uh, to the the Halloween party, yeah. and. 
and she and and she, and she gives him a look when she says she's willing to go, and he looks excited. That looks almost like he's reading it as she's being seductive, but the audience knows no, she really wants to kill this guy. And I mm-hmm. thought that was that that was it was a very clever use of expression. I thought, um, yeah, so, yeah. Oh, but yeah. The fact so, is, if he was in any way being sensible, he would that the expression on her. She was not yeah. trying to conceal her expression no, at all. She looked like <laughs> she looked like a predator. She looked like a predator that was about to pounce on its prey. Yeah, um, there was nothing. She wasn't putting on a false seductive act or anything. Yeah. It's but like, but you can tell that that's how he read it, right? Like that. Oh, definitely, exactly. Uh, I'm saying my point being that he was seeing only what he wanted yeah. to see, not what was right in front of his face. That, one of the things that's kind of brilliant about this movie is because she's mute, everyone projects onto her. Yes. Yeah, you know, and they, they kind of overwrite her personality, which is really intensely portrayed to us who come to know the character. Um, and it she does so make... She's so... Acting they like think she's horror. an angel. They all think she's an angel. They all think right. she's or, an or angel. A, or a victim or whatever, yeah. you know, and like ultimately she she's a lot more... She's a really rich internal life, you know, Um and her psychology is all over the map after the beginning of this movie. So, uh, I, I don't know. I, it, it makes even... The, the way the men treat her in this movie makes them seem a lot sleazier than I think that they really are. L- like, the guy who kills himself seems like he's also going through some really hard yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. I know. Know. Bad Stra- bad strangling bad. the cat is bad, but, like, in the context of everything, he, he it's, like, the least bad thing that could have been done in that you know what i mean because you almost <laughs> thought he was going to murder the the wife or the lover right so right or do do something i mean that's pretty disgusting right but then he also shoots himself in the head like clearly he's not in a good place you know yeah. and like like when she gets that there's that one guy that's outside of the theater with either his girlfriend or something and like she's far away from it and she's yeah. dressed to kill and it's just like he just kind of walks away after what looks like just a normal argument and she's just oh, yeah, like foaming at the mouth to kill him and it's just like why yeah the that guy ice cream shot. that's the one that i think is the most telling because like you're saying it was just a lover's quarrel. He wasn't doing anything wrong. And I think they even were playful at the end of the quarrel. Right? I was going to say, I didn't yeah. even think they were having a real struggle. I think it was like, she because I mean, she was going into work. I think you're like yeah. a restaurant or something she worked at. And he was, he was like dropping her off or something. And I felt like, you know, he was kind of like trying to be flirty. And because she's like, I got to get to work. She shoves yeah. him away. You know, quit, you know. Yeah, I see it came off as purely playful to me. But she's yeah. reading it as, 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 as bad. Violent. Yeah, which I think gets into the whole idea of maybe she is trying to get legitimate justice here, but she's just so she's either unable to read things properly or her sense of justice is so skewed because of her experience or whatever. And there's such wonderful vagary to the ones that happened before that, like the pimp, like, okay, pimps are bad. I could see that. Well, that's a direct, that's a direct callback to um, Dirty Harry, I think, too. Well, uh, well there, there's that, too. But, like, then she's sh- surrounded by four dudes in the park, and she takes him out in what's almost an action scene. You know? Because, yeah, like, yeah. those guys didn't have good intent. Like, maybe they were just scaring her, but, like... Well, they said, okay, so in that scene, they say to her, we want everything you have. And I interpreted that to mean that they were probably going to rape her. And yeah. so, I think... So, yeah, like, those guys needed to die. Then the uh, then the shake after that is... is shake, right? Am I saying it right? Yes. Oh, get up. Okay. Thank you. So the shake after that, <laughs> and he's right after that. Like she shoots those four guys, walks like literally to the sidewalk away from that park, like this adjoined to it, and immediately is picked up by him, and she kills him. And again, like he seems sleazy, but not monstrous. So I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Yeah. And again, some of these situations, maybe maybe she was intuiting something we didn't know, but True. we would have needed more information to make that judgment, it seems. so. Um, this, this movie is really smart in that it shows how people project their own version of what's going on into an ambiguous situation. Mm. Like, that yeah, happens I, over and over again. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think you're right. And definitely, like you were saying, with her character in particular being mute, people just kind of see what they want to see. And I think what they see is the girl at the very beginning of the movie who sort of seems like a sweet, angelic type character, right? And, and, so, and also like a pushover. Yeah, yeah, yeah pushover. For, like, yeah, just, but somebody who wouldn't hurt a fly, probably, right? Like, that's sort of the uh, impression that she gives. Um, 
Yeah, so when she comes, and I think that putting in her nun outfit in the last scene is is a really good contrast because that's that's kind of what you see. You see someone that's like, you know, pure and harmless, and yeah. you know, and then she comes down and she just turkey shoots so many dudes. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's a, that's a really slaughter. good point. She's dressed as a nun. She's dressed as like a pure person, right? So it really, you know, what it, it shows you that that was that was at that point what everyone saw and it was a disguise you know yeah uh, there's a lot of clever use of disguise in this movie like the the first That's rapist true. has the clown mask on um yep. you know and and again like you get to the end of it it's a costume party everybody's wearing a disguise um uh, I don't know, it's just, there's a lot of just clear, that's almost like a Poe reference. Like, I got a real uh, Mask of the Red Death energy after on that last scene. It's, it's been a while since I've read Mask of the Red Death. Well, I, here's the thing, everybody was wearing masks. That's the... Well, yeah, I, I mean, it was a mask. <laughs> yeah, oh. 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 <laughs> I miss in terms of other potential connective tissue, you know, <laughs> Um, <laughs> there were multiple rooms with different lighting, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm struggling with that one. But I it just, I don't know. I've been reading a lot of Poe recently. Like, don't, don't at me, bro. Okay. No, no, it's <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so I don't know. I, but again, I, I would end this with, with Joel's recommendation of 4.5. I agree with that. Um, and, and yeah, so if, and if you want to see, I mean, this is like, if, 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 uh, you know, if, if I'm going to give like a list of like five movies in this genre, this is definitely going to be on that list. That would be the way I would put it. Well, there's, there's not a lot of movies that are just this, right? Cause we, we've already mentioned, I spit on your grave, which is a much more straightforward version of this. Uh, yeah. Death wish is kind of this kill bill. Maybe. I mean, I guess it depends on whether you're <laughs> emphasizing the revenge fantasy or the, the vigilantism or the rape revenge. Like I tend to group it with stuff like death wish. Like that's sort of like yeah, what? like I you really the death wish parallel is really obvious, you know. Um, so no, I, I would I think revenge is the thing that is is what I would generally categorize this movie under. Um, I think rape revenge, like aside from my spit on your grave, I can't think on the top of my head. I can't think of anything else. Was it Last does. House on the Left? Yeah, last that's house. what. Oh, I was okay, yeah, that's the other one. Yeah, there were a yeah, bunch. That, of, there's a bunch of them. Yeah, those those are the two most famous. It's not like you really watch those to go. I want to dig deeper into this genre. Yeah, Let me watch the lesser versions of these yes. movies. So there, yeah. yeah it's, oh, there's that. Wait, wait, wait. Um, fuck, uh, Irreversible does that too. Although Irreversible, yeah. it kind of turns it on its ear. Um, that's a oh god. But you mentioned that's Kill a, Bill. If somebody saw Kill Bill and liked it, this would definitely be a movie that they might be interested in seeing. Yeah, totally. Yeah, anyone. That was There's even a bride in it, right? Like one of the people she shoots is a guy dressed up as a bride. That's oh, the shit, last yeah. victim. The last victim is dressed in a bride's dress. Um, yeah, I symbolism. I mean, I I know that 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 definitely has to be symbolic. But I don't. I, I I I I'm gonna need another year of thinking about this movie before I really <laughs> have an idea yeah. of what that means. Um, uh, it, you know, but yeah, I'm sure. I, I was hoping that somebody had kind of gone. Like I was looking online to see if that sort of stuff had been broken down. I couldn't find anything, unfortunately. So I don't. I it, it might just be too low on the radar to really get that kind of treatment, or maybe it's just hard to find the articles on it. Um, but I was very curious about that. I was like, okay, why is the last victim a guy in a wedding dress? That's kind of odd. Like that, that's a weird one. Yeah. And then I, I started thinking, okay, should we go through all of the people's costumes who got shot? And you know, is it is it that, you know, would that be worth exploring? I, I again, that's sort of more. I don't think that way about a movie. The first two weeks or a month of, I, I think I saw it like. Adam, when did I contact you about this movie? Was it like a month <laughs> ago, a month maybe? Or so ago. I, yeah. I, I, I could check my emails, but I'm too lazy. So. Yeah, so I, I, I don't. It's on your list. I don't think that's enough time to really formulate the those kind of thoughts. Yeah, I, it. I mean, it's a brief movie, but it, it's a it's a very intelligent movie, and I think it does deserve. It, it almost demands that you think about it and roll it uh, roll it over in your head because I mean, you have clear symbolism. You have all this wonderful vagary where you're you're asking questions of like, well, what what was the what were the characters' motivations here? Like, yeah. did mm -hmm. this is this a justified something or other? Like, there's a lot of wonderful there's a lot of wonderful 
thoughtfulness that you, the, it just it invites dissection and, and it, it invites uh, examination. It's, it's really fun. I, I love that. I love when a movie's kind of a puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't. I would say people can check it out. It's on. Is it on Shutter? Is that where it's uh, available? Uh, Shutter's where I saw it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like free with ads or something. It's really, it's really easy. I saw it without ads. I think I got Shutter and I saw it without the ads. So, but but I think you can see it even without having Shutter with the ads. So it I is. It, it, I was surprised when I went to the options for streaming. It's streaming on everything yeah it's I, was, I was thinking this would be more obscure but it's it's really easy to find yeah well it's probably not in super high demand so everybody picked it up cheap yeah the yeah. one on the one on prime looked pretty good though i thought i thought that looked like a, you know fairly i don't know what the one on youtube how that looks compared to this one but uh, and i was frankly surprised that there weren't like i thought there would be like a bunch of like new blu-rays of this out you know like well, at, no, like, well Two th- I saw 2011. It's a Alamo Draft House bought the movie, and okay. they they, re- they remastered it in 2011. And the digital copy is the remaster. So okay. It, it, okay. It, it is actually a movie that's been well taken care of. So okay, that's, that's good. really good on Shutter. So yeah, so we'll uh, we'll let you go, and you know next time we'll see what what we bring to the table here. Yeah.